What's going on all my internet people out there? And good morning. Today, we're going to start off this morning by saying, I gotta give it to the Duramax. You guys saw the video. She pulled great, but we have not tried the Dodge yet. I'm kind of, uh, kind of thinking the Dodge might take it. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Uh, and you know, for you four guys, you're all gonna disagree with me, but I, you know, it is what it is. But today's video, we're gonna head over to Chris's shop. We're gonna uh, change the fluid. We got a little construction going on over here, right here. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Man, I must say, these guys are uh, busting their butt in this hot, it's hot too. I mean, it's only nine o'clock and I think it's like 82 outside already. And they're just sitting out here baking in the sun. But you know, you want that money? You gotta work for it. Oh, there you go, 82 degrees. So, like I was saying, I passed the 500 marker. We're gonna go to Chris's shop. We're gonna change the fluid and we are going to put the new pan on. So we're gonna see how much more it takes. And also we're going to see uh, how much or if any metal or what the fluid looks like that's coming out of there. Um, because I've, I've personally never, you know, done this before. So I'm curious to see if any metal comes out and how bad it looks out of there. And I'm sure the question that you guys are gonna be asking is Eddie, what if that Dodge, you know, pretty much outperforms your Duramax, out pulls it, you know, can, I mean, like I said, that dually, that 3500, I mean, that thing was incredible. It, it was just like, whatever gear I put that thing in, it went. And I understand it's deleted. I don't have a stock 3500, uh, nor 2500, actually wait. I just thought of someone that's got a stock 2500, so we're gonna try that. That is going to be the, uh, the next video actually for you guys. We're gonna find out, uh, we're gonna do the deleted one, then we'll do the stock one and then go from there. But I'm sure you guys' question is, Eddie, if it tows better than Duramax, are you gonna get a Dodge? You know what, if Dodge figured out a way to get their transmissions down or, or and I, I, I don't know, ISIN people are saying is pretty good, but I believe everybody's saying that only comes in a 3500. So I don't want a 3500 or a dually. I don't need anything that big, uh, nor do I tow anything that big. But I would probably start thinking of just dropping a Cummins in the Duramax. If I can keep my Allison and put a Cummins under the hood, that would probably be my next route. And uh, when we get to Chris's shop, I'll ask him about it and see uh, if we can do it, if it's possible. I have seen it done. I don't know the cost. I don't know the price. Oh man, my uh, little suction fell off, I guess. Okay, I guess it's still holding on there pretty good. Well, that, that sucks. Well, this is not good. We're almost empty, guys. We're gonna have to head to our local diesel station and make sure there are nobody blocking those diesel pumps, but I'm trying to, I, I bet you that there's going to be probably uh, two diesel pumps available, six gas pumps available, and uh, they're probably all gonna be blocking the diesel pump, but you know, let's go and see. Nice little LML there, but why Ford? Why is there always a Ford with the hood open? I don't get it. Look at that, a diesel pump is wide open for me, just for me, guys. Well, let's see how much uh, this bad girl takes. Uh, we're not filling the back tank, we're just filling up the front tank. And diesel is 403 a gallon right now. There you go, guys. $60 only gets you 14 gallons. Almost 15. Jeez. Look at that. That is a beauty right there. Whew. I'm telling you. He probably doesn't even feel that boat behind him. Gosh, man, you know, beautiful truck, but that tank, GM, find a new spot or somebody find a uh, relocation spot for that thing. I mean, that's ridiculous. Look at it. Look at the Dodge. It's not deleted, but you don't see no hideous tank. All right, looks like $134 got me 33 gallons. Okay, not bad. All right, guys, for all of you uh, wanting to know how to get EGTs, I put a probe in here in the uh, manifold. Now, here's a sign of your EGT probe going bad. I just noticed this right now driving. You see how it's fluctuating like that? That means that, well, now I'm going downhill, it doesn't count, but uh, when I'm steady, I'll show you guys. I just noticed it's fluctuating, so that's telling me that my EGT probe is 
going bad now and gonna have to be replaced. I don't know if you guys remember this hill in my video when I was going to uh, Chris's to get it re-geared. You guys remember this hill? I had to pretty much put this thing in fourth gear to climb it because, I mean, fifth gear was dying and sixth gear, no way to make it. Well, right now we're in sixth gear and I'm just cruising up this thing and have plenty, you know, of power to go up it. So, if you guys, you know, are asking me, should you re-gear your truck if you put on 37s? Hell yeah, because, I mean, this is, it's incredible just how the response is and how much more torque this thing has. I mean, you guys saw in the last video, before I could even make it up this hill, I have to literally downshift it in fourth, which was ridiculous. Here you go, guys. I'm on steady ground now. You see how just see how it's going from eight to six? Like, let's see if it does it again. Oh, now it's steady. See that eight to seven? So that right there, that's telling me that my probe is going bad. See nine, and then to six. That's a no-no. Your EGTs will not do that uh, when you have an EG, EGT probe uh, into the manifold. So uh, it looks like uh, we're gonna have to replace this now. We have finally arrived guys. You guys remember my buddy Rob there? The myth, the mechanic, the Rob. I guess he's an AC master. You doing AC now, Rob? Yeah, everything, man. Damn, so he's supposedly a badass here, I guess. He does work on my truck, so if he's working on my stuff, you know he's a badass. What's wrong with this Ford, besides it being a Ford? Uh, AC's not blowing cold. Uh-oh. That's not good. Alright guys, here's the moment of truth. He's pulling apart the front first. We're gonna see uh, how much crap comes out of the front. So there's a bunch of metal, little metal, dirty. How's it looking? Looks good, that's the magnet right there. There's nothing on it. Well, uh, it looks pretty clean. Now we're working on the rears. Oh, just a little bit of bloom, nothing, no chocks. Normal. Not bad, not bad. So now that new diff cover I'm gonna put on is what? Should hold two more quarts? It holds about two more quarts and it gives you more of a heat sink to dissipate heat, keep it a little bit cooler. And make it look cooler. Oh yeah. Alright. All right. Alright. And it's like a Ford graveyard in here. Looking for a GMC Dodge, something. I don't see it. I just see Fords around here. Hmm, looks weird. Strange. So Rob, what kind of fluid do you uh put in here? That's uh 85 uh 140 uh Olympus Sin Gear. So a good uh synthetic gear oil. Real it, high temp rated. Is that front and rear? Both, yeah. Okay. A lot of the front diffs don't really call for synthetic because they don't they don't get the same you know uh, workout like the rear diffs do. But we just run it and everything. Just in case. Yeah, it's just better. And I mean, realistically, you're not gonna have to change the front diff juice ever. Yeah, I don't ever really even yeah. use four wheel drive. Okay. I got a question. I, got a, I kind of, I don't know if it's a dilemma. It could be a maybe just simple question. But so I did a little comparison with the GMC and the Ford. I haven't done a Dodge. I did do a Dodge. I did 3500. The Ford, it did okay. Pulled my toy hauler in fourth gear up the grades. Uh, kind of the same as when this truck had pretty much the stock gears on 37s. I'd have to put in the fourth and, yeah. and hit it up there. Now. This thing now, I can pull it in fourth and fifth with the Duramax. By the way, the Ford, you know, as you guys saw, it started, I, we pulled it back in the driveway, it started like overheating, pissing, cooling everywhere. I don't know what's up with this Ford, but now I tried it with a Cummins, a 3500. Yeah. Uh, it was deleted, but stock tires. And that thing pulled the trailer in fifth and sixth year like there was nothing back there. Yeah. Now, the question is, we're gonna try a 2500 deleted Cummins on 37s. Yeah. Do you think it will do the same thing or no? I bought a little bit, but yeah. Do you think it'll be like the dually? Uh, probably. 
dualies to pull the best, you know that. But, yeah. But now, is on it, the gear ratio, dualies might have a towing ratio on the back. And, you know, are you, are you doing the same gear ratio? Is well, like the max tow this, package or no, this 37 that we're trying is pretty much. Or, uh, no, I think it came with 342s, the Dodge. Yeah. And he's got 37s on it now. But if that Dodge does end up pulling it, the question here now is how can we just swap a Cummins in this Duramax? Is it possible to put a Cummins anything's, with the Allison? Anything's possible. Cause guys, that's <laughs> that that you know, if this 2500 Dodge deleted pulls just like a madman like that 3500, I think we're going to have to put a Cummins in this. But can we make that happen? Can it work with an Allison? Yeah, they do it all the time. I don't know how to work with your gauge cluster and all that stuff. That might be a little mad there. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't know, guys. Stay tuned. We're going to get this Dodge here soon, and we're going to try it. We're going to try a stock Dodge, not deleted, with stock tires. 2,500 Dodge deleted on 37s, and see how that pulls compared to my truck. So what do you think? Because I just, I want to have that, that pulling power like that Dodge. Yeah. Well, I think you should compare the peak torque at RPM on each truck and see where, you know, it fits in fourth gear on the uh, on the uh, Ford to get it to the correct RPM. And yeah, same Ford. road speed, it depends on the gear ratio on the tires you have to. So. so it looks like there's a lot of options, guys, that come into play in all of this. Um, just as of right now, we're gonna wait and we're gonna see, you know, what happens when we try this 2500 Dodge and go from there. Do I got a big what? Can I got a big. No. Now, I gotta do that too? Yeah. Every time I come here, you guys cost me money, man. That's the name of the game. Gosh. This is why I don't come here, guys, because every time I come here, it's so expensive. And I, and I don't even come for repair. Sometimes I come to hang out and they start looking under my, oh, no, no, you you need this. Oh, you need that. Now I need a tranny pan out there. Man. Don't come here, guys. It's gonna cost you a pretty penny. Still looks good in there. Oh, yeah. It's a good sign. It looks good, that pattern's real good on there. No, uh, nothing, nothing fishy going on there, nothing weird? No, All right. So Rob, you put this on dry or? Yeah, it's got a nice big O-ring on there, so I'm not gonna put any sealant on there. It should not have any problems leaking. Okay. And then I noticed there's only 12 holes instead of 14 on What's that up? one. And this? Yeah. I'm guessing you minimize two of them or get rid of two of them? It ditches this one and that one. The top one, okay. But the O-ring goes and cuts down below that, so it'll seal it up. Okay. It's probably because they got their cover, their plug here and whatnot, and they got these ribs here, so they can't put a bolt there because of the plug bone. Okay. Know. Then we'll have to do a little something with your. Uh, Oh, great. Here we go. Here we now what? Now what do I need to do? Uh, pay me more. Pay, of course. Got to modify. Well, I, my next thing is I'm going to do the uh, CP3 conversion in this. Oh, are you? Yeah, because I worry about this CP4 just exploding on me. Uh huh. And I just don't want to take the risk. So I'm gonna probably just pretty soon have you guys uh, convert that. it. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Oh, I heard no, I know it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Why do you have to cut that off? Because this rib right here. Ah, uh, okay. So it's going on one bolt now. See what I mean? I see, I see. It's it's bolt on, man, direct fit, man. <laughs> yeah. Bolts right on. Looks a little dirty. That's just, like I said, from what was in the tube before. And the tubing and stuff. Unless I see a little metal in there. That's normal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Polish her up. Now, that should give me what? They say at least anywhere between 80 to 100 more horsepower. Oh, 400. Four, oh, 400. damn. Okay. It's a rocket ship now. Wow. Especially if, if you put the sticker on the bumper, it's way better. Game over, huh? Yeah. Woo! Oh, you heard it there, guys. Stickers make you go faster. There you go. So if you guys have an issue with your stickers, ask Rob. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll make up for it. What is that? Cordless rivet gun. Look at that, guys. Oh, that's badass. <laughs> I didn't even know Milwaukee had this. <laughs> that's new. 
See, Milwaukee's got it. What, do you have a Milwaukee guy that comes by here in a truck or what? Order it. Order it. That's badass. Well, there you have it, guys. The diff is on. The fluid has changed. Truck is running great. I'm very, very happy with it, but I still can't wait to test the Dodge. So stay tuned. And thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. Peace. Yeah.